Hello everyone and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol Battle Report for the channel and once again we are visiting Asgard. Although this is a special occasion because I think for the first time in the history of the channel in 80 something battle reports uh, we actually have a mirror match today of a 16 threat match between Asgardians and Asgardians. So in, off, uh, in order to differentiate between them um, we'll be calling each side something a little different. But we'll go over that as we look at the specifics of both sides on the table layout we see before you. So this is going to be the good Asgardian side, even though on both sides there is questionable mixtures of characters who couldn't really be called good or ambiguous or whatever. But just in order to differentiate, this is the good side for Asgard. These are the defenders of Asgard today, being led by Thor, of course, bringing along Valkyrie, who's got a new updated stat card as well from card pack 2022. We have the newest release, Heimdall, so he'll be controlling the Bifrost, teleporting people around and holding on to points if possible. And then we have Loki, of course, joining his brother, and Loki has been given the Space Infinity Stone, or gem. And there are other tactics cards, Odin's Blessing, Med Pack, Sibling Rivalry, Seeing Red, and Rainbow Bridge, because we can't not take Rainbow Bridge if you have Heimdall, it just fits. And the other side of Asgardians are the villains, sort of. The, the villainous side, more so than the good side. Also being led by Thor, of course, being represented by this mighty Thor, Jane Foster 3D print. So exactly the same as the other Thor, uh, for now anyway, until she gets her own model officially, of course. Being joined by Hela, the other new release for the Asgardians, Scourge, and uh, the, the master he kind of serves, Enchantress. And their tactics cards are... Meet My Executioner, Weapons of Midgard, Grievous Wounds, Brace for Impact and Reversal. And I'd just like to point out, three of these cards have Scourge on it and he looks different armor-wise in every single one, which is quite funny. And here is the two Crisis cards being played. The Extraction is Fear Grips the World is Worthy Terrorized Citizens, because how could you not? So that is the four hammers that make your attacks stronger. Make Tactics cards cost more but otherwise just mean that people will be rolling lots of dice. So it'll be a fun one. Might be a quick one, but it'll be a fun one. And the actual value being played for the match is from the Secure, which is the Missing Witnesses. They are they are very missing if they somehow ended up in Asgard, but either way, there's two Witnesses, two victory points. For a Witness you're securing, it's one for each hammer. During the cleanup phase, the Witnesses may start to run away, and you can suffer damage and stun if you're within one once it's finished running away. So we pull back here a little bit. One hammer, and then there's one hammer over at the other deployment side. There's a hammer on each flank, and also on each flank underneath the hammers, because they're meant to be exactly in the same place. One witness, and one witness. So, we'll be back at deployment. So we're all set up and good to go. The defenders of Asgard slash the good team is to your right, and the bad team, the villainous team, are to your left. It is the good Asgardians going first. We can take a look at where they are deployed. Heimdall is down here with Valkyrie. And we have Thor and Loki together here. They've kind of left the top empty for them. And then if we come over to the other side of the table, Hela and Enchantress are down here, Team Green. Scourge is basically in the middle. And then the other Thor, uh, Jane, is up on this side of things. So with that, let's jump into Battle Round 1 and see how Asgard versus Asgard plays out. So the game got started with the Valkyrie activating and moving forward a move and a half roughly or moving two thirds to get just within one of the witness over here and to pay one of her two power for the hammer that was there. There's a lot of power on the table. They're all as guardians so they're all starting with two. Loki's getting an extra one from the Infinity Stone. It's going to be a very power heavy match. Enchantress was first activation for the bad Asgardians. The villainous Asgardians, well the mostly villainous Asgardians. She moved on medium, then spent her two power that she started with on Siren's Call to force a Valkyrie to advance small, which put her where you can see her now, which is outside of range of one of the witness there. She then tried to do a spurned affection, her beam uh, five dice energy with sap power on a wild. Valkyrie fully blocked the damage, but did lose one power to the sap. So the Guardian of the Bifrost himself, Heimdall, activated and he also moved a well, full movement plus a half roughly to get to where Valkyrie was prior to her forced movement. Now sadly the plan to use the Bifrost to get Valkyrie back into a more advantageous position isn't going to work. It costs three, so Heimdall does not have enough. But he does have a move where, uh, it's for Fend I believe it's called, where if someone moves within two he gets a free attack against them. So he has enough power to do that. 
but yeah, his his actual Bifrost teleport is pretty expensive. It's range four. Uh, well, the target you can select to do it on is within range four, so that's why it costs so much because it's got such a wide range. But yeah, sadly, Valkyrie's just going to have to weather the storm for a bit. Hela activated and eventually used her second action to move up to where you can see her. But from where she started, she spent her two starting power on Claim Soul, her range four five dice Mystic. And if it does damage, she gets a Claim Soul token on Valkyrie. Uh, the initial roll wasn't great, two successes, and Valkyrie's initial defense roll with three dice was two crits in a wild. So she's doing very, very well at being survivable so far, just purely based on luck. Thor Odinson activated next, and for once didn't immediately open up the game by doing Get Help. He instead moved to the far side of the hammer that had been there, paid one power to pick it up, and then moved further down here. He's decided to bring the scrap down to Team Green down here. That was followed by a very similar activation from Scourge on the Evil Asgardian side. He moved up enough that he was on the far side within one of the hammer that started on their side of the table, picked it up for one power, and then moved medium. But he went up here. He is aiming for the other side of the table where there isn't much fighting going on. A little bit cowardly, but he's cheaper and probably a better point defender than wasting a Thor on. So Loki was the last activation for the good Asgardians this turn. He moved medium kind of forwards to see if he could get within range 4 to spend 3 on illusions because he has 3 power because of the infinity gem. But uh, Scourge made sure he was just outside of that, so no good there. So instead he just moved into the middle to leave his options open. He could head up towards Scourge next turn. Or he could help gang up on Hela and Enchantress, depending on how it goes. So it's over to Jane Foster Thor to end off the turn. So Mighty Thor did consider moving towards the middle. She could have chucked her hammer at Loki. If there was only one victory point difference in turn 1, she probably would have done that. But her moving the way she did, which was to move twice over here and paying one to pick up the hammer meant that she's also getting two victory points for holding that witness so it was too many victory points to give up just to chuck a hammer at Loki although I'm sure that's very fun uh, but the victory points were more important so with that we're on to scoring for the first round so at the end of battle round one things were kept pretty much even for the good Asgardians Thor Odinson has one of the hammers as does Valkyrie and Valkyrie managed to survive way more than she should have without taking a single hit there um, so they generate two victory points each, and they had control of one of the missing witnesses for two, putting them at four. And it's the same story for the villain Asgardians. Uh, Scourge has a hammer, as does Mighty Thor, for two victory points, and they held the witness at the top of the table. Now, during the cleanup phase, you also handle the witnesses moving. They get moved by whoever's not controlling them, essentially. So the evil Asgardians move this one here. Anyone within one takes one damage and stun, so that in this case it's just Valkyrie, so she's stunned to one damage. Over here, it got moved in anywhere within two. It got moved between Scourge and Mighty Thor, so they also both took one damage and have been stunned. The good Asgardians have retained priority, and with that we can jump into battle round two. So Valkyrie got battle round two started, and she started by using the Asgardian affiliation bonus to pay one power to get rid of that stun. She then tried to do a basic strike, 5 dice physical, up to 6 because of the hammer she's holding. On Hela, I'm not saying it was a bad roll, but there was 4 skulls and 1 blank in it, so uh, Hela easily blocked that first effort. She then tried to do another strike, that did much better, and she managed to do 3 damage, which is right over there, apologies for the shakiness, there we are. 3 damage to Hela, and then she used that power to do uh, Asgardian Might, I think it's called. It's a pick up and throw for size 2 or less enemy character or terrain. So she picked up Hela to throw into Enchantress and they both paid 1 to use Brace for Impact to cancel that out and get rid of it. Well, Hela wanted a little bit of payback and Valkyrie's luck ran out. Well, kind of. Hela started with her basic attack to try and get that bleed proc on a wild on Valkyrie. Didn't get it, did manage to do 2 damage though. She then spent on Reigns of Hell, there was no allied characters close enough to Valkyrie to be in danger of also getting hit by the explosive on it, but it spiked and did 5 damage. So Valkyrie is very much uh, dazed, she dropped the hammer, Hell paid 1 to pick it up, she also spent 1 on the Asgardian affiliation bonus to heal 1 damage. She's totally tapped power wise, but she finally made up for not doing anything turn 1. 
So we're back down this end of the table as the good Thor, Thor Odinson, activated and spent on a Foraz guard, which is a move and attack with a basic strike. He moved down here, then did it on Hela, and it spiked hard. He had one extra dice thrown in for the hammer he had at the time. It did five damage. She only had three health left, I think, even after healing herself. So she is dazed. He paid one to pick her hammer up, so now he's holding two of them. And then for his other action, he did a hammer throw, which normally costs one. He spent the extra two to force Enchantress to use her worst defense, or two energy defense. Chucks three hammers at her in total, and managed to get her for three, plus the, the shock as well. And he's within one of that witness there. He had a very, very effective turn. And don't ask me where he's holding all three hammers, but he has them. So Enchantress activated, and first of all did a move to where you can see her. She's within one of the witness. That triggered Heimdall spending two on Forfend. So he gets a free strike on someone who's ended a movement within two of him. Uh, unfortunately she was using her full Mystic Defense because he couldn't afford to pay to force her to use her bad defense. She easily blocked the damage it would have done. She then spent three on Amora's Kiss, which is an action. So that was her other only action this turn. But she snatched a hammer from Thor and used the old Siren's Call and stole it from him. So he's down to having one plus his one he has normally. But now Enchantress is holding the one that's been getting passed around. Oh, and forgot to mention, she spent one power on the Asgardian Affiliation bonus to heal one damage. Decided it was better to do that to try and stay alive for the turn than get rid of the shot because she isn't attacking. Heimdall activated for the good Asgardians and stayed where he was. He initiated a basic strike and his strike is as basic as they come. Range 2, 5 dice physical, gain power equal to damage dealt, etc, etc. Went up against Enchantress's good mystic defense because he couldn't afford to pay f to not use it. Got one damage through though and that meant that when he did his second strike on her, he could pay to get her to use her bad 2 defense. Two more damage got through and that was exactly enough to daze her because she has six health and she was sitting on three damage. So she dropped her hammer. He did have one more power and he has spent it and picked it up. So the good Asgardians have gained full control over this side and this uh, missing witness. But all in all they did all that just to regain control of the hammer that Valkyrie lost. So they haven't really gained as much upside as you would think from everything they did down there. Oh, we're actually going to have to wreck on that ever so slightly because Enchantress did pay that one to heal herself during her activation. So that actually was not enough to take her out because she had two damage on her prior to that, not three. Oh, that means also that the shock is still applied to her. But she's still got the hammer and she's alive on one HP, which is so much worse. Jane Foster Thor activated and moved up such that she was on the far side of the witness server, but still within one just to try and make sure that she and Scourge can hold it this turn. She paid one and chucked her hammer at Loki, who uh, didn't really want to get out of the way. He considered using Odin's Blessing, but didn't. Um, she had one extra because she's holding an extra hammer for the objectives, so that was six dice. Yeah, six dice. Got into Loki, three defense, and got him for a good three damage. Also shocked him, but he wanted the power to play with, and he isn't holding one of the objective hammers, so... Odin's Blessing probably has a better use somewhere else. So Loki was the last one up for the good Asgardians this turn. He started by paying two to use Med Pack on himself, which means he has healed that three damage he just received. He also paid one to use the Asgardian Affiliation bonus to get rid of his shock. He moved once, and then unfortunately he had to use the Space Gem to get his brother out of the way because it was a bit awkward trying to get placements down there. So he shoved Thor over to the far side of the Witness so he could move in, just so they have uh, the majority, because with Enchantress not being dazed, it was a draw there currently, and that won't do. So with that, it's over to Scourge to end off the second battle round. So all Scourge did was reposition ever so slightly, and then use his other action to shake the stun that he had. Otherwise, he's just staying over there. So things have certainly escalated at the end of battle round 2, with three characters flipping over their cards already. But Enchantress man managing to hang in there with 1 HP has certainly changed the way the scoring has gone. The good Asgardians, Thor holds one of the objective hammers for one victory point, And they have the majority for where this witness was down here for two victory points. So they gained three, taking them up to seven. The bad Asgardians though, they have the other three hammers for three victory points. And they hold the other witness, so they gain a total of five, taking them up to nine. So 9 plays 7, the good Asgardians retain priority. But the Witnesses have to move, of course. Uh, this one was moved by the bad Asgardians over here, so Heimdall and Loki have taken 1 damage each and been stunned. 
This one over here was moved by the good Asgardians and Scourge and Mighty Thor have also uh, taken one damage each and been stunned yet again. So with that, into battle round three. So for the start of this turn we are down here because Thor Odinson activated to get us started. And he started by doing a basic strike plus one die to it though because of the hammer he had on poor Hela and it did uh, one damage to her, it did not do well so he had to do another one of course and this one did much better it did 4-0 and the reason he's doing this and it's also very important during the recap I said three people were dazed forgot again Enchantress was alive so no two, two people got dazed and that's very important because that means Hela only had two soul tokens she needs three to, to resurrect if she hits zero health on her daze side so Thor just took her out she is gone upon which point as some form of reprisal Enchantress used Reversal to try and get some damage back on Thor. Uh, another allied character within three of the attacking character spends two, roll four dice, do one damage for each crit and wild. She did one damage. You know, not, nothing much. That card never really works out, to be honest. So that did one damage, and then Thor used Sibling Rivalry, aka Get Help. He and Loki both play one, he chucks Loki medium and he doesn't suffer collision damage. Enemy characters roll two fewer dice and gain stagger afterwards, although that part's not relevant because she took the full force of him being flung into her and has dazed. Thor paid one and has picked up the hammer. Now, you might be wondering why didn't Enchantress use Meet My Executioner to make Scourge teleport across the map and take the hit for her? And this is down to the wording of the card, which is presumably the correct intention. It specifies that she can use it if an ally within a certain distance, I think, is about to suffer a collision. It does not say she is allowed to suffer the collision because it specifies if an ally within so-and-so of Enchantress is about to suffer a collision, Enchantress can play, uh, pay to to play this card. So the way it's worded, she can't use it on herself. So that's why she didn't do it. So losing Hela and dazing Enchantress has obviously made things bad for the villainous as Guardian side, although they are ahead by two victory points, remember. Jane Foster Thor activated, she moved up medium, doesn't want to charge in and let a bunch of people gang up on her though, so for her other action she shook her stun, she also paid one on the Asgardian affiliation bonus to heal herself for one, so she's only got the one damage on her. But that just leaves Scourge for them, and let's see, Loki, Valkyrie, Heimdall for the good Asgardians. Heimdall activated and only really used one of his actions, so I guess he could have shook the stun, but he's just going to get it again at the end of the turn. He moved ever so slightly to where you can see him. He spent three on Guardian of the Bifrost to teleport Loki within two of his current position, which is why he has now been displaced there. It does put Jane in range of his Ice Blast, the Beam 3, so that might be a way to do a little bit of chip damage to her as the turn continues. But it's over to Scourge now to end off the villain as Guardian's turn. Well, in order to try and maintain that point lead, Scourge has little choice. He moved up ever so slightly, but still such that he's still within one of the witness there. He's not going to get a chance to do anything besides that, unfortunately. So of those still to go in the good Asgardian side, Loki activated, and from where he was standing, he did two of his Ice Blast. Is it called Ice Blast? Yes, Frost Blast, sorry. Uh, it's not a great attack, Beam 3. It's only four dice energy, however. First roll, four blanks. Second roll, three blanks and a shield. So there wasn't even a defense roll required, that was embarrassing. So for lack of anything other to do, he paid two to use the space gem to teleport Valkyrie from where she was forwards to. And it's over to her to end off the turn, which means that the good ass guardians have lost priority next time. So Valkyrie is always very scary on a turn following when she was dazed. She spent a total of seven power in basically one go after moving forwards once medium. She then did a charge Warrior of Legend Dragon Fang, so that's 3 3, uh, sorry, 2 2 4, or 2 2 3. Does that add up to 7? 2 2 3? Yeah. So that adds up to 7 for the charge plus an attack, and she's doing Dragon Fang. Uh, Warrior of Legend is a bit different now. For every crit and wild in your roll, you can change another die to a hit, i.e., you can change a blank or a shield, which you can't alter skulls. Uh, she did very well, but Scourge did really, really well. He's got 4 physical defense, and uh, he did very well. He still managed to take 3 damage from the Dragon Fang and he's bled as a result of that. She got her free strike for getting a crit and a wild I think in the attack roll but that was fully blocked by him. So Scourge survived on 1 HP which means he's safely holding on to that hammer he's got 
and because he's on his healthy side and she isn't, he's still holding that witness. That would have been a massive turnaround if she'd managed to take him out. But, c'est la vie. So despite losing on the battlefield, the villainous Asgardians are actually doing very well score-wise. They had two hammers at the end of the turn for two victory points and they held one of the witnesses for two more victory points, taking them up to 13 of the 16 required to win. So in the next round they just need to try and hold on to or find three victory points. However, we'll just cover this now, the witness gets moved by the good Asgardians, it got moved over there and it deals one damage to Scourge which means he gets dazed and this happens in the cleanup phase. So he would daze, he is flipping his card, he's dropped his hammer which has been placed over there. He will still get a turn though, he'll just be on his flip side now. Um, but Anna did score the points first, but he has now flipped his card as well. The good Asgardians, they have the other two hammers for two victory points and they hold this witness who has been moved over here to do one more damage to Heimdall and Loki as well. So they've caught up to 11, so there's still a two point difference. It's less likely the good Asgardians will get enough to win on this next turn. It's possible for what's left of the villainous ones. Uh, we'll see. And Enchantress is definitely flipping her card over this time as well. So with the villain Asgardian side taking priority, it was Jane Foster Thor <coughs> who activated. And she, the reason she activated rather than Enchantress who's, who could get ganged up on is because if they secure that corner over there, they can't lose. They'll win this turn. So she moved such that she was within one and in between the hammer that dropped and the civilian there. Paid one to pick up the hammer so she's now holding two and they're pretty safe on her even though she's got one damage. Oh in fact no, she, she paid her one power to, uh, that she had left over to uh, heal herself. So she's actually at full health. She struck at Valkyrie, six dice normally, two hammers up to eight. And got her good, got her for three with a wild for a throw, chucked her away just to force her to move back in to reduce the number of attacks that might be coming in against her and Scourge. So three damage to Valkyrie, she got chucked over there. If nothing changes over there, that's four victory points. Two on her, two for holding that, and that's enough for them to win. That's the part that needs to change. So Valkyrie activated and wanted to get right back in there. She spent on another, it was another five power. Uh, on a charged dragon fang right in there against Jane Foster. However, uh, Scourge spent two on right hand man because she was within two, so he becomes the target of the attack instead of the original target. And it's just as well because the attack roll actually spiked, but that sacrifice meant that Scourge took five damage and he gets put down to five health on his day's side. So that sacrifice cost him his life. He went and Ragnaroked himself. So Scourge is out of there and then for her other actual action, because that was part of the charge dragon fang as one action, she did a basic strike on Jane Foster Thor and she took one damage from it. So thanks to Scourge being removed from the table, the only other activation for the villainous as guardians was Enchantress, but she had a really good turn because Thor didn't pay attention to her being on her day side and being able to act because he hadn't moved at all so he was still within one of her. So she activated and immediately spent 3 power on Amora's Kiss again, or whatever it's called, the the one where she gets to steal an asset from someone within range, uh, range 1. She stole a hammer from him again, then she used Siren's Call to force Loki to move for 2 power just to get him out of the way of the other end of the table. And then for her other action, because Amora's Kiss is an action, she moved into contesting range of the Witness there. So, she's probably going to get ganged up on, but the whole point is... I don't think the good ass guardians can now stop them because she is gaining another victory point for that hammer she's holding and there's these three still to go but they have to still somehow find a way to get that hammer off of her claim priority on this which I guess Thor can do because he's still on his healthy side yeah so is Heimdall and then somehow get over there and either move or take out Jane I, I don't think there's a way but let's see what happens so after taking a look at the battlefield for quite a while there's one potential way out of this and it's not done great so far but between Heimdall and Loki if they can take out Enchantress there might be something we can do with Thor. Now Heimdall activated he did two of his basic strikes going up against her buff defense dice because couldn't pay the two and the first one was fully blocked the second one did three damage which I think she has two health left I believe she has five on her, her unhealthy side so if Loki can do that two damage drop the hammer next to Thor, Thor pays one, picks it up 
moves and does a charge or yeah a charge would probably it wouldn't put him within range to do a, a strike but maybe a hammer throw it would have a couple of extra dice for the hammers he's holding if that spiked it could potentially take out Jane that is literally the only way I can see this going positively for them so it all comes down to Loki's turn so Loki moved in on Enchantress in order to do one five dice strike he paid the two power to make her use only two defense dice only managed to do one damage needed to do two he has failed now during Thor's turn he can easily do one damage to Enchantress obviously there's an astronomically low chance that he won't even though he's rolling one extra die for a hammer so that would be seven dice physical twice especially if he does a charge just to guarantee it and even if he doesn't he can then pick her up and throw her so that's a guarantee he can do that it's not going to stop the villain side from winning though he, he can do it now if he picked up the hammer he could have moved and then charged throw you know, it might be fun just to see if that would have been like a last minute spike save. Let, let's maybe like measure that out. So it wouldn't have helped Thor because the charge is a strike only. You don't get to pick the attack so he wouldn't be able to hammer throw. And he wouldn't be able to use the Rainbow Bridge card because he's holding an objective. Heimdall and Loki didn't have enough power to do it so that's why they didn't in case you were curious. But just pretend that you had that second hammer. I'm very curious would he have spiked so 5 dice base on a hammer throw he's getting 2 extra for having 2 extra of the objective hammers on him what would the roll have been like? not good it would have been 3 even if that all got through she would have been fine so yeah we are at the end of the game so let's just wrap this up officially the villainous Asgardians despite only 2 of them being left have three of the four hammers for three victory points which on its own is enough to get them to the 16 required to win. They also are controlling one of the uh, missing witnesses for two more, taking them to a final score of 18. The good Asgardians, Thor Odinson has a hammer for one victory point and they're holding the witness down here for two more. Puts them on a respectable 14, like it was close, but the biggest mistake made was technically in the crossover from turn one to turn two. The good Asgardians decided gank Enchantress and Hela down here, hold this side of the table and just win. Now that would have worked in theory if they'd ended turn 1 with point advantage. But because they didn't, they then wasted turn 2 having to fight back to get the hammer back that Valkyrie dropped, which was the net gain of one skin making it even. So they missed out on their chance and then as the game proceeded, <laughs> Mighty Thor over here in Scourge just had to sit there and generate that little bit of two-point lead and that's what carried them home despite the fact they were losing the fight. So that was one on objectives, um, a little bit of misplay with going in here too strongly. If Heimdall had, had enough power, I mean, there's no way he could have, but if he did have enough to move Valkyrie back in turn one safely using the Bifrost, the game could have turned out very, very different. Although she did do a really good defense rolls, which were a bit abnormally <laughs> statistical speaking, or abnormal uh, statistical speaking. That was a fun one though. It's the, the first kind of mirror match affiliation wise we've ever done on the channel. And I didn't see it going that way, to be honest. Anyway, I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for doing so. Please do remember to subscribe if you want to see more in the future or go above and beyond if you want to support what we do here. That'd be very nice. Enjoy the rest of your days. Day. <laughs> I made that sound accidentally sinister. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta for now.